All right. So many people think that those in marching band just sit around in the bleachers all day playing in music. However, I'm here to tell you that marching band actually requires a lot of athleticism. Today, I want to prove to you that marching band should be considered a sport. Now, according to the Oxford Dictionary, the term sport is defined as an activity that involves one, physical exertion, two, skill in an individual or team setting, um, three, competing against others for entertainment. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go ahead and elaborate and explain how all three of those components are demonstrated in marching band. So that first component was physical exertion. <clears throat> Bands aren't limited to just the bleachers. There's, they perform in various spaces, including across football fields and miles and miles of roads in a parade. So with that being said, there's a lot of room for movement, and that movement is called marching. Now, according to the New World Encyclopedia, marching bands adopted military-style marching into their performances in order to create a more aesthetic and efficient transition across their <coughs> stage. <coughs> and um, <coughs> this is done. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate with my hands just for all of you in the back who can't see my feet. So imagine the bottom of my palm being a heel, and my little fingers right here are the toes, and this is the floor. So this is done by over-exaggerating the striking of the heel onto the floor while your toes are pointing upwards. And then you're going to go ahead and roll forward until you land on to the floor, and then you're just going to continue that. So it's very exaggerated compared to normal walking, which is very neutral, so you're just like patting. So it's very exaggerated. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so you wouldn't believe how sore your ankles and feet would be after doing that for so long. In fact, according to an article titled um, Rose Bowl, or Tournament of the Roses, the Rose Bowl Parade is 5.5 miles long and takes about two hours for a single marching band to complete. So could you imagine doing that for 5.5 miles for two hours? That's really exhausting. <clears throat> Furthermore, a field show is when a marching band performs on a football field and they do um, a series of formations across the field. Um, <clears throat> so, with that being said, they have to transition from one part of the field to another in a limited amount of time. So that can be very challenging for the player because they have to move quickly from one spot to the next, all while playing their music correctly. Moving on, marching band requires a lot of exertion on the lungs. According to a study by Dr. Jeff Edwards, Chair of the Physical Education and Athletic Department at the um, Indiana State University, he did a study where he measured the metabolic heart rate of a marching band member while he was doing a field show. He strapped on a heart rate monitor to the marching band member and found that his metabolic rate was 13 times um, higher than that of his resting heart rates. He also compared his oxygen consumption level uh, to that of a well-experienced runner in the middle of a marathon. So could you imagine having your heart rate that high during your performance? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> um, with that being said, marching band performers definitely exemplify physical exertion. Moving forward, that second component was skill. Now, if I told you all about how marching band players are skilled in music, then you wouldn't believe me that they're athletically inclined. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about how um, I'm going to talk about some talents that marching band players have, in that are associated to those um, who do sports. So first off, much like dancing, marching band players have to incorporate intricate and difficult choreography that they have to master. Now, in an interview with Dr. Travis Cross, uh, UCLA um, head of the music division and former high school marching band director. He agrees um, that marching band um, inquires, requires choreography that you have to do perfectly in order to be in sync with the rest of the band. There's tons of flashy movements and changing of formations um, that have to be done. It's really tough and you have to have a lot of skill and a lot of talent in order to be part of that sport. He even compared it to dancing and he compared it to uh, synchronized acrobatics, which is also an Olympic sport. <clears throat> Moving on, in an interview with Ms. Kathy Rogers, she demonstrates how marching band incorporates stamina, 
This is both in the rehearsals and the performances. So in that interview, she talks about how um, she talks about her band expectations and experiences with her marching band program. She mentions how her marching band would practice for from nine to five in the summer for two weeks, and when school started, they would have the rehearsals um, twice a week for three hours each. <clears throat> this doesn't include the amount of hours they had to put in on their own time to practice in addition to extra rehearsals before competitions. She also mentions in that interview how she kept track of how many times her band performed a song in a two mile parade. So in a span of one hour, she found that her band played the same, the same one and a half minute song memorized by, um, just so you know, 30 times. So. With that being said, it's about 40 minutes of that 60 minutes, they were playing um, that same song. So 50 minutes of non-playing time. If you were to break that down even further to how long um, they had to rest in between playing that same song again, it's about 30 seconds. Imagine 30 sec playing that song for one and a half minutes and then having 30 seconds to rest. And by rest, I don't mean that they got to just sit down and catch their breath. They're still marching during that two miles to finish that parade. So 30 seconds to rest, and then they gotta go do it again. <clears throat> so it's pretty, pretty tough. It includes a lot of stamina. Needless to say again, marching band players are very, very skilled. That last component <clears throat> was com competition. Believe it or not, marching bands do compete with each other and are scored on various categories. Uh, according to scoring sheets established by the University of Texas, um, the main categories are visual performance and musicality. So imagine like a dance competition, but the dancers are actually performing the music that they're dancing to on top of that. If you ask, if you ask me, then that's definitely like the next step or next level of athleticism right there. Going back to those scoring sheets, however, uh, for, in terms of visual um, performance, so, um, bands are judged via points, and these points can get deducted based on very, various different reasons. One of them could be marching out of step, another could be sloppy formations in a field show, or even just poor showmanship. <clears throat> What's even more intense and anxious about those performances being judged is that the judge can be up close and on stage with you. So, there will be times in which a judge will be standing right alongside you during that parade and marching with you um, as you're playing your music so he can see everything that you're doing. So you need to be perfect at all times because the judge is watching and he's looking for those mistakes. <clears throat> In terms of musicality, judges do do that as well. They will deduct points based on incorrect notes, rhythm, tone, things like that. And they base it not only as an ensemble as a whole, but they also base it on individuals. So it's important for every player to know their craft. They have to practice for the good of the team because only one person can make that difference between that band winning a competition or losing. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> with that being said, the pressure is on for marching band players. They have to perform well individually and as a team in order to win. So in conclusion, marching band is a challenging <coughs> sport that requires pushing yourself beyond your physical limits, extreme versatility in the arts and athletics, and the hunger to achieve greatness amongst fellow competitors. In high school, I did cross country, track, and tennis, but my most difficult and challenging sport by far was marching band. I had to push myself physically, I had to put in all those hours um, for those rehearsals, and I wanted to beat my hometown rivals. Now, in the words of Dr. Travis Cross, that professor I mentioned earlier, just because it involves art doesn't mean it's not a sport. So, the next time you guys meet someone in marching band, I challenge you not to see them as a band geek, but rather as a musical athlete. Thank you.
So, Matthew, what did you think? Um, I thought that the intro, the intro was a bit quick. Um, it could have been a bit longer. Maybe use a story, but uh, it got to the point. And uh, the hand gestures are, um, they were used well to explain uh, what he was talking about. Um, but sometimes they're being like a bit overused. And uh, the statistics were well presented as well. He explained um, <coughs> where he got the, the quotes from. And uh, as for eye contact, um, he was a, uh, it was actually circling around the whole classroom, and I thought that was good. And um, uh, he, did, he did a good job explaining the different aspects of the skills that are needed to be in a marching band. And uh, the, the, he did a well job explaining the stamina and the mental composure that's required. And um, I like the conclusion, how he ended it, ended it off with uh, something to think about for the whole audience. And uh, again, yeah, so. All right. Well, I, I think you made a lot of good points there. Um, I think the goal is clearly identified at the beginning. Uh, like we talked about on uh, a claim of fact, when you're making a claim of fact, the question is what are the criteria that establish something as a fact, and you do a good job explaining, well, let's talk about what constitutes a sport. You give us uh, definitional criteria. You've got four or five things that you're going to mention uh, in the course of the presentation that you then use as the structure for the speech. So that works fine. I thought that you had solid data on each of the individual points. You had interesting examples that you pointed to. Uh, the description, you know, the visual description with the uh, gestures talking about marching, I thought was an interesting point. And there are lots of things that you can all, you know, relate to. Uh, I never did marching band kind of stuff, but I was the band booster president for my daughter's band. And of course, she was in the Trojan marching band at SC, and she did the Rose Parade thing. So when you started talking about how long that is, I said, yeah, I know that one. That's a long walk. You know, they do that one, um, a long walk. You wish it was a walk, a long march, as you said. Um, the, uh, it's organized clearly. There were a couple of places where the um, uh, transitions, I think, were, were where the signpost was clear, the transitions maybe could have been a little bit smoother, but I like... I, I, I agree with Matthew. I like the way you finished off with that uh, closing line. I think that's a good exit line that you have there. And it would, it would be nice if there were some of those similar kinds of things in the body of the speech uh, to make the transitions with, you know, something that's clever about the way you're getting from one idea to the next. It's clear. There's no problem with that. It's just maybe I could add, give it a little bit of value added uh, element to it like you did at the end of the presentation. Um, and you cited your sources very clearly. Uh, maybe the, the one presentation thing that's a little bit problematic is you know, because you've got the notes there, you feel like you've got to lean over them a little bit. And I understand, you know, when you get there, that's, but it's, I'll tell you what, I prefer that to your standing behind the damn lectern the whole time, uh, which is what some people would do instead. And this, if you were doing this in competition, by the way, I'd say that to everybody here, if you were doing this in competition, You'd practice a few more times, you'd get used to this, you'd get rid of your notes, and then you'd be doing all of these things without having to worry about the notes. It's just because your turnaround time is so brief, it's tough to get it all done. You know, when, uh, I think I psyched myself out because I was like super confident when I came into this classroom. Yeah. And then so as like more performances came on, I was like, oh, I gotta keep looking. And then yeah. I think I just brought it to me or brought it with me, and I was like, oh, I just probably. If I didn't bring it, I feel like it would have just clicked. And yeah, I I, and, and that's, I think that's probably true for a lot of folks. It's like yeah. you kind of have to force yourself to <laughs> yeah. say, stop don't being dependent this. on this. Don't bring this. You know, It's like getting in the pool without your floaties the first time. You know, <laughs> When you're a kid, <laughs> you got, though. I can't go in the pool without the floaties. But you, you got to get there sooner or later, and that's kind of the way you need to do it there. All right. Thank you.